In this video, we're going to talk about the concept of slope. Okay, all lines have slope, and all the slope is is it's an indicator of just how slanted your line is. Okay, uh, basically, or how steep your line is. That's another way of looking at it. Okay, this red line here, you can see that this red line here is steeper than the green line is. I don't know how well you can see these colors. Just in case you can't, when I talk about the red line, I'm talking about that one. When I talk about the green line, I'm talking about this one. When I talk about the black line, I'm talking about this one. But so, this line is obviously steeper than this one is. And in mathematics, we say that it has a higher slope than this line does. Than this, line does. this line, as you'll see as we go from left to right, it's heading downhill instead of uphill. And so this line has a negative slope. Now, how do you measure the slope? Actually, it turns out to be quite easy. Uh, let's start by measuring the slope of this line here, okay? Well, what you do is you find any two points on the line. For example, let's go from this point to this point, okay? And what I want to see is I want to, hey, there it is, I want to measure this little triangle here is a delta, and it's a Greek letter. And delta is the Greek D, and it stands for the difference. I want to find the difference in my y's and divide them by the difference in my x's. So difference, sometimes I'll refer to it as the change. The change in the y divided by the change in the x. That's what slope is. Some math teachers like to call it rise over run, because the change in the y's is how much it goes up and down, and the change in the x's is how much it goes across. And so the up and down would be rise, the across would be run. Okay? But... I'm generally going to refer to it as delta y over delta x, the change in the y divided by the change in x. So, back to our line. Here's one point, here's another point, and so I want to see what the changes are. So my x changed by 1, 2, and my y changed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? So when I measure the delta y over delta x, I get 6 over 2, which is 3. So this line has a slope of 3. And I'll write that on here. I'll write m equals 3. Now, you might be looking at this m equals 3, and you might be thinking, slope? m? Yeah, me too. I have no idea why we abbreviate slope with m, but... Most algebra textbooks do, so I'm going to go along with that. Most high school algebra textbooks do. A lot of college algebra textbooks use the letter A instead of M. It doesn't matter, though. The main thing to remember is slope is the difference in Y's divided by the difference in X's. Okay? So the, line, the slope of this line is uh, 3. Let's find the slope of this line now, the one that I called the green line. Uh, that line is going to have, let's see... I'm going to go from uh, this point here, where they cross, to this point here, okay? So I'm going from this point to this point. My x is increased by 1, 2, 3, and my y is increased by 1, 2. So that means the difference in y, come on, difference in y, there we go, divided by difference in x is 2 over 3. And I can't reduce that, I'm done. So it's just 2 thirds. Okay? So this line here has a slope of, oops, has a slope of 2 thirds. Okay? Notice 3 is bigger than 2 thirds. This steeper line has a greater slope than the, uh, the not so steep line. Uh, I also want you to notice that I happen to take these two points, but I could take any two points. I could also uh, have chosen this point here and this point here, okay? If I choose these two points, then my change in x is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And my change in y is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that would give me a fraction of 6 over 9, and when I reduce 6 over 9, I get 2 thirds. So it works out no matter what 
two fractions, uh, no matter what two points you use. As a matter of fact, I could think about going backwards, and I would say, well, what if I'm going from this point to this point? My y would go down two, and my x would go to the left three. Down two means y is decreasing by two, and to the left three means x is decreasing by three, so that would be negative two divided by negative three, which also simplifies to be two-thirds. So it really doesn't matter which two points you pick or in what order you pick them, okay? The change in y divided by the change in x always turns out to be the exact same fraction, which is the slope, okay? So now let's measure the slope of this guy right here. And uh, this time I'm going to take, uh, well, I'm going to take the origin, and again I'll take this point where the green and black lines cross. So, my, from here to here, my x's increase by 1, 2, 3, 4, because remember when x goes to the right, it increases. And my y's decrease, they go down by 1, 2, 3, 4. And so that gives me the change in y is negative 4, and the change in x is 4. And so that tells me that the slope of that line is delta y over delta x is negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1, okay? So the slope of this guy here is negative 1. And again, you'll notice that when a line has negative slope, that means it's going down and to the right, and when lines have positive slope, they're going up and to the right. Again, I could have chosen, let's say, this point and this point as the two points that I'm, uh, uh, that I'm using. And let's say I start from this point and I go to this point. I'm going to be going to the left three and then up three. So that would give me, uh, that would give me a positive three, my change in y, divided by a negative three, my change in x. And positive three divided by negative three is still negative one so the slope is still the same. Again, it doesn't matter which two points you choose. When you take the, the ratio of the differences, the fraction of the differences, you always get the exact same slope. Okay? Now that's how to find slope from a graph. But what if you're not using a graph? What if you're using, uh, let's say, a table of values? Okay? So I have this linear function here that is defined by this table. It says it goes through the point 3, 8, and through the point 6, 3, and through the point 9, negative 2, through the point 12, negative 7, through the point 15, negative 12. What do we do then? Well, pretty much the same thing. Uh, you would choose any two points uh, on, in this table, and you would calculate the change in the x and the change in the y. So, uh, let's say, let me just choose the top two points, okay? How much is my x changing here? x goes from 3 to 6. So the change in that is 3. It's going up by 3. y is going from 8 to 3. It's going down by 5. So I would say the change in x is a positive 3. And the change in y is a negative 5. Okay? That means this is my change in y. This is my change in x. And remember, the slope, which we call m, well, we write it as m, the slope is change in y divided by change in x, and that means it's going to be negative 5 divided by positive 3. And uh, I would probably just leave it like that. You know, you could always write it as a decimal, call it negative 1.6 bar if you want to. Uh, and uh, again, now notice... This is going to be true no matter what points you choose. You could choose 3, 8, and 12, negative 7, for example. From 3 to 12, x increased by 9. From 8 to negative 7, y decreased by 15. So the change in y is negative 15. The change in x is 9. And you would get negative 15 over 9, which, of course, simplifies to negative 5 over 3. Okay? you still get the exact same slope, no matter which two points you choose. Okay? So slope, slope is a very, very important uh, uh, feature of, of lines, 
And so it's really important that you get this down because we're going to use this quite a bit in the future.